Uh, this is a poem called The Revival of the Religious Sciences. The title comes from one of the great uh, Muslim scientists, uh, theologians, and thinkers, Al-Ghazali, who wrote this big tract called The Revival of the Religious Sciences. So I was interested that in Islam, religion has this, is understood as a science. You know, it, the thing that intrigued me is especially in terms of the way religion is typically uh, the, 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 the discourse of religion, particularly in, in kind of popular or, or more sort of widely circulated channels, tends to be very antagonistic towards science or it presents itself that way or we're, we're led to believe that there's this, you know, dialectical opposition between the two. It seemed really insightful that here's this, you know, here's this, this medieval Muslim thinker who, yeah, the, we're going to revive the religious sciences. Because uh, that's the, there's, the book is in four sections, and that's the, the title of this particular section. Um, there are a couple of things in poetry that I, I, uh, I really love. Um, you know, the way, that, the, way that a, uh, the way that a child loves sugary cereals, you know. I love lists. I, I love when lists come into poems. I love poets who love to list. It's, and it's, I think, one of the most interesting, strangely simple things you can do in poetry, generate a lot of, a lot of power that way. Uh, I also love to make up words. Um, and in the case of this poem, um, I ended up making up a bunch of religious sciences, and I gave them all Latin titles. So they would sound, there's no way you could dis dispute the authority of these religious sciences I intend to revive in this poem. So what I'm going to do is read my translations of my Latin. Um, and the Latin is, I mean, it's, it's a total joke. So if any of you has Latin, uh, please forgive me, or mea culpa, I'm just, I'll say it that way. The new sciences, because I'm going to get to them, though you're going to, you'll, you'll uh, find them in the poem here. They are uh, Roman tumbling, secrecy of counting, breathing techniques for mass, anxiety of calligraphy, passional ether diving, physics as awe, and the reticent knowledge. The revival of the religious sciences has an epigraph, balsam of souls, the body's bliss. That's Henry Vaughan. No palm branch, no citron, in nobis, sine nobis, the outer, the lower, the dark, extend unevenly beneath the bubble of air, the universe. Boundaries demarcated in light, where the empire curls up like a leaf, going only so far. Even rapidly expanding space goes only so far. A disturbing shock percusses softly on the symbol of atoms. This sad science poetry. Einstein guessed it. A ruse of depth. New speech is discontinuous light. A mirror's broken surface. Blood of two morning doves glazes the cut plane. A history of breakage is the history of the unconscious. Or its genesis spoken into concentric flux. Moments of burial and resurgence spell the texture. Abrupt ligatures we dream there. Before too long, I want to revive the religious sciences for the measurement of space, for the demonstration of physical uncertainty. Dionysian icons lurid with heat, vivid terraces of saints seething with entic, entomoan knowledges. Lunar moths, earwigs, queen bees, near translucent ants, a restoration of the prairie grasses as a kind of cosmology. I will call these new sciences Coruro Romanum Enumerum Arcanum Misa Pro Respris Chirographum Metum Passio Urino Etherius Naturum Reverentium Scientia Reluctans. We spent millennia chasing the outward world, hapless experts at exploring it. We need now to look inside. In exchange for any lost progress, I will give you 100 years of inwardness, a century of the soul's spiral movement, 
labor, prayer, reading, inner energies coalescing from lower domains, a private flaming ministry, the most Miltonic knowledge. Uh, indigo, cardinal. Um, it refers to two of my favorite birds, uh, the cardinal. You've got to love the cardinal in winter. Thank goodness for that little splash of red. And the indigo bunting. Indigo cardinal. Wires tight across the carapace hum from catgut strokes at the bridge that shapes the ancient saltarium. Force that twitches invisible in the instrumental ganglion beneath the seed crusher's hollow bill. This strange and uncanny process of crystallization. Then it is nighttime again and I go down a staircase carpentered with enclosure. I have this one steel-fired sensation holding the nerves of my neck like antlers. Evil's abiding presence. Its polar molecules whining in alignment. Its microscopic flora and fauna. Um, <coughs> this poem is called Steering Goes Watery. When I initially put this, uh, when I initially put the poems in this book together, um, I like, uh, another thing I really like are notes. So there's a lot of notes in the book. There's like, Six pages of notes, and they're ridiculous. But I had included as a note for this particular poem, there's some data in there that's, one of the things is, uh, there's this church in Gloucester, Massachusetts called Our Lady of Good Voyage. And if you've ever been to Gloucester, the front of the church faces, uh, faces the harbor. And, you know, at the, at the, the, apex, of the apex of the facade, um, there's, there's Mary, mother of God, and, and she's cradling this object in her arm, and it's not Jesus, it's a ship. Um, and I first learned about this in the poems of Charles Olson. And Charles Olson, as you're going to hear, shows up in the poem. But when I uh, put the notes together for this, this, uh, this book, I included a note saying, you know, uh, I think it said something like, this really happened. And if... Uh, a friend of mine who, who looked it over, he said, yeah, you should probably get rid of that because, I mean, that should be the case for all of them. You don't necessarily want to make people think, well, this didn't happen, this other poem, what's going on? Steering goes watery. Beyond that barrier, a sucking motion keeps collapsing. Speed falters. The water jacket, iron hot, grills the cylinder till the coolant vaporizes or plumes into the gas tank, reeking of cooked metal. I don't understand it. Drive belts shred like string cheese. All of a sudden, the chassis starts floating. There's a liquidy trickiness to life, an entropy of spillage. I had a breakdown, a breakdown, one of many so far this year. I-90 hummed there for five hours, warts of refineries, bleak jammed motorway, a killdeer claimed a greasy puddle under the armature. Its namesake call an alarm, repeated. By midnight, each minute was an egg deposited from the anus of the queen bee into a waxy hexagon, sealed and remote. Later, Charles Olson stood in a street in Gloucester, a smallish man, neat, trim. He wore a kempt beard, a clean overcoat. I knew him as death and called him father. This made Olson laugh because he knew the poet I thought of as a father was already dead. Soon we are embracing. I am so moved with affection for him, which he returns to me. Above us, Our Lady of Good Voyages is drooping light, a weird anxiety and certainty. I want to mention his glutinous pace, but there was none. He could not walk. What strange error of pride in the world made Olson? 
for all the wreckage out there, a tow truck hopefully comes. That's kind of the, that's the, uh, that's the motto of the book. Hopefully it's coming, okay? Seriously. When the, so that did really happen, and when it did, uh, it was the, uh, the engine block in my car cracked, okay? And when that happens, you're, you, from your exhaust pipe, this unbelievably thick, pluming smoke starts emitting, and it's got this incredibly pungent smell. And we're driving along, and we're just my wife and I were leaving you know, this, this unholy wake that nobody could actually get through. So we pulled over to the side, and I thought, well, if we let, maybe if I let it cool down and start it up again. We'll, it was, and we were on the, uh, the Skyway right by Gary. We were stuck near Gary, uh, Indiana. And I, this, I can see this guy's face to this day taunting me at, at, my, at my weakest moment. I'm sitting there, just, I just want to get home. And I turn the car back on, and this, the smoke starts roaring out of the tailpipe again. And this guy is driving by, and he rolls his window down, and he goes, It's your head, gasket! It's your head, gasket! And he just drives on. That was it. Isn't that great? Because that guy had experienced it before, and he wanted me to know. He's like, you're totally going nowhere. 